You know, there was a time when I used to complain that there wasn't a whole lot of Cold War games or games that take place in that era, but now there's just a bunch of them just like popping up out of nowhere. So if you're someone that likes Cold War but doesn't really like Call of Duty, then for the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking about some alternatives that you can look at. The first alternative that we're going to be talking about today is 83. This is a game that I've been covering on the channel for a while now, but in case you don't know or maybe don't remember, from the developers that brought you Killing Floor 2 and the Rising Storm series comes 83, a combined arms first person military shooter that takes place in the Cold War. This is a game that's supposed to have high player counts, like up to 80 players plus, and is still currently in development. Like you can't just go out and play it right now. Like the only reason that we're really talking about this today is because they released a Q&A that I am just covering now, but they released it about a week ago. Didn't see too many people talking about it, so I thought, eh, what the hell? So let's go ahead and get into it. The video starts off with the developers talking about what they're going to be saying in the next couple of minutes. So, you know, pretty standard stuff. Basically, the goal of this video is to answer some of the most frequently answered questions and some of the questions that are not so frequently asked, if that makes any sense. So let's go ahead and get into the first one here. The first one here is, will there be helicopters in the game? This is a question that I've seen a lot. It's an interesting one because I thought that they actually confirmed it when they showed off the uh, American pilot character model. But here they are about to answer the question. Here's what they say. Yes, there will be player flyable helicopters for both sides in the game. It's as simple as that. I mean, it would be really awkward if uh, they decided to make a pilot character model and he's just like out there running out on the field, not piloting a helicopter at all. That'd be awkward as hell. What would be the point of having a helicopter character model if he wasn't going to fly a helicopter? <laughs> that would be a lot of wasted effort. But yeah, they go on to say, if you were a fan of their previous game, which I'm assuming is Rising Storm 2, I never used the helicopter myself, but they say here that the controls are going to be a lot more familiar to somebody who's been using them in that game than anywhere else they say that there might be a slight difference because they want to up the realism a little bit but for the most part it's pretty much where it's supposed to be if you're someone that's never played rising storm 2 he goes into explaining it he says that it uses a physics based flight model which he says is extremely challenging when you start flying but as you practice and learn how to do it this can definitely get into your hands and turn the course of battle as he describes it and after that he mentions that there is going to be multiple types of helos in this game but they don't want to describe which one is going to be in it but they say that each faction is obviously going to get their own version of their own helos from the you know those separate countries so that's pretty cool and that's pretty much all they got to say about that yeah i don't know i'm probably not someone that's going to be flying those around because i'm generally really bad when it comes to flying things so yeah i hope i can at least shoot them down but uh yeah let's move on to the next thing here the next question they got is will the game have a story that's actually a pretty interesting question to ask because i've never known their games to really have stories then again i've never really followed the games long enough to actually know if they have stories or not so I'm curious to know what they say here yes it will now that's surprising they say that even though this is a fictional conflict it is rooted in history with some variations of events and reactions to those events they say that they want to talk to us more about it as soon as game release comes to a much better state but at the moment it's very bare bones so that's pretty interesting now i don't know if it's like a full-on like narrative story like a campaign mode sort of deal where they actually have cutscenes and all that like i think it's just like this event is going on so you and your team have to take out this thing and that's about as far as it's it's probably gonna go but who knows i've been surprised in the past before why not now he continues on to say that a lot of the events are going to be linked to their systems to have consistent warfare and will directly evolve the constant driving narrative of the battlefield by the actions of the players so i'm assuming that if you decide to like pick a specific faction and you keep doing that faction and you know that faction keeps winning a lot then i guess they'll be gaining more ground i'm assuming it's definitely an interesting concept but i just have to wonder like how they're gonna do that i mean i'm sure they're gonna have have the statistics on hand but we'll definitely see how that goes moving on here the next question here is is there a commander role and or ability calling similar to the previous game i'm sure that there is going to be but let's go ahead and hear what they have to say yeah, just like our previous titles, we will have a commander again here for 83. Figured as much. I think my biggest issue with the commander in the previous one is that it just felt very spammy. Like I died to it a lot. And I'm not really sure if the commanders actually had, cause I, I mean, I've never played the commander myself, but I've noticed that whenever somebody would use the commander, they would a lot of the time bomb friendlies. And I'm not sure if that's because they actually had control over where they were bombing or if it was them just, you know, trolling. So I kind of hope that the cooldowns are a lot, 
you know, bigger than the previous one, to be honest. I mean, it was a Vietnam game, so was Friendly Fire intentional? I don't know, but it seemed to happen a lot. He continues on to say that they are looking to improve some of their quality of life functions, mostly around communication and coordination, because in the previous one, there wasn't too much of that. I'm assuming he's trying to make the game feel a little more like squad, just to make things easier for the commander. And they're also thinking about giving the commander more things to do so that they're not just staring at a bunch of cooldowns at 10 minutes at a time. So basically, they're going to be able to call in a bunch of abilities, but they're also going to add more abilities that you can actually do on top of that, and a little bit more variety in their functionality. Unlike the previous games, the abilities plan to be roughly symmetrical to all the factions. They say that they want to actually add more depth to the way that they actually use their call-ins, but they don't want to go into it in this video. They want to talk about it more later on down the line. Then he goes on a bit of a tangent here. He says that uh, there are going to be airplanes in the game, but they're not going to be pilotable. They're just going to be call-ins because they kept getting a lot of questions about that. So they thought they'd answer that. So that's pretty much that when it comes to the commander role and the little added in note there. Let's move on to the next thing. The next question they have here is, will there be a squad feature? And if so, will it allow squad spawn in? I think this was a feature in Rising Storm 2, at least with the um, NATO factions. I think they were NATO, right? But yeah, basically, if you had a squad lead, you were able to spawn on them. So let's see what they have to say. 83 does indeed have squads. And then he goes on to say, they're looking to bring a lot of the things that they had in the previous titles into this title. So I'm assuming that they're gonna have basically the same squad system, just judging by what they say here. Then he goes on to talk about features that are going to be included, like dividing to a squad, kicking from a squad, renaming a squad, locking squads. They're also going to be expanding the amount of people that you could have in a squad, which I believe in Rising Storm 2, it was only just five, I think it was. I remember it only being about five, but I'm curious to know how big that threshold is actually going to get. And then he goes on to say, that they want to improve the functionality of a squad leader so that he could communicate a bit more effectively with his commander and squad mate. So I wonder if they're actually going with the squad approach when it comes to communication. I definitely wouldn't mind that. That'd be kind of cool. As for spawning, he says that they intend to have squads spawning in together, but at the moment, they don't actually have it like planned out as to what they're going to do. But on the drawing board, they say basically that they're probably going to use the same like spawn tunnels that were in Rising Storm 2 or a placeable spawn that the squad lead can put down with various placement restrictions. It's going to take a couple of seconds to put down. There's only one of them per squad at a time, and it's pretty easy for the enemy to locate and destroy. So definitely interesting. I'm really curious to know what these improvements look like out in the field, because I remember communication not being that big of a deal. Like, I just remember, like, the commander just bombarding the shit out of people in Rising Storm 2, and then he just yells on the comms, be like, go, 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 go. And we're like, oh, okay, we're running, yeah. The squad's not really even together. It's like running up to it, you know? But uh, yeah, pushing on to the next thing here. Oh, here's the million dollar question right here. Is there any possibility of having dynamic destruction in the game this next guy was kind of hard to understand but i think basically what he tried to say here is that they're going to try to do as much as they can because you know the unreal engine isn't really known for like destruction or at least in my experience if somebody's ever done it better let me know but um basically the level of destruction that we're talking about here is like windows falling apart or little fences falling over doors being destroyed and you might be able to shoot through a couple of walls and that's pretty much it maybe some walls can you know be destructible but that's about it nothing too crazy from an indie game studio on unreal 4 that's it's about it's about the level that i would expect to be honest i mean this isn't the frostbite engine they say here that they're going to be doing a lot more testing to see if they can actually add more destructible stuff into the game so at least they're trying but uh yeah this next one is a really long question holy cow how do you go about designing a level based off of a real world location while still taking into account player mechanics and game balance that's actually a pretty good one to be honest they start out by saying first they decide on what kind of gameplay they want to have in their level Levels. Then they begin to look for real world locations that roughly provide fitting landscape features. Once that's done, they identify architectural features that are common for the area. Things that people would expect to see in that location that they will be playing in. And then they add some more of that identified common architecture to the level so that they can support the desired gameplay. And they actually give an example here. He says that if they want to have an objective in a location that's more than likely going to be an open field, sometimes they'll move around major terrain things or add buildings in that location location, things that wouldn't be there on a real map, all in the name of getting like cool looking landmarks and features and make it into a reasonable game area. So yeah, that's pretty cool that they're actually using real locations and editing it in a way so that it actually balances out. So that was that. Let's move on to the next one here. The next question is, is there an official list of confirmed weapons? They say here that there is no official list at the moment because later on down the line, they're most likely going to add more. So they don't want to just like, you know, set their sights on only like a specific amount. Obviously they want to add more guns. 
but they do actually list off a bunch of weapons here that they've already shown off, which I'll read them to you right now. The L1A1 SLR, the L7A2 GPMG, L4A4 Bren, L42A1, Sterling L2A3, M79 Grenade Launcher, Browning High Power, M26 Grenade, AKS 74U, RPK 74, PKM, Dragonoff SVD, Makarov PM, VZ61 Scorpion, RPG7, RGD5, M16A1, M60, M1911. That's already quite a bit of an arsenal there, but I'm sure they're going to be adding more as soon as they get more factions and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's move on to the next thing here. The next question here is, will there be any level of player customization? And they say that there is going to be customization. They say that it's going to be a lot like the previous game, which again, I'm assuming is Rising Storm 2, but it's not going to be like completely in depth. Like there's going to be like some customization here and there, but it's going to be very simplistic. It seems I can't remember if you had to unlock things by playing the game. Like as soon as you level up, you unlock stuff or if it was you had to buy the clothing. I forget. I think you had to level up right to unlock clothing. I think it was, but it looks really simplistic the way that they talked about it. So yeah, they're definitely going to have character customization, but when it comes to weapons and vehicles, they're talking internally about it if they want to even do that. But at the moment, they're just kind of like keeping it on the back burner, it seems. So yeah, let's move on to the next thing here. The next one says, will you be any more options for customization with regularity after launch? And of course, the answer is yes. They say here that they don't know what exactly form that will take, but they do intend to keep releasing additional content. Well, after release, they're going to give you a lot more ways to make your character feel like an individual than actually, you know, somebody that looks exactly the same. They have a bunch of items that they can add as customization options. It's really just a matter of how much they can do before release, but they will definitely be doing more post-launch than they will probably at launch. But anyways, let's move on to the next one here. It says, will modding SDK be available at launch? I'm not entirely sure. Is SDK a gun? Is that like a dev kit or something? Can somebody explain to me what that means? Well, anyways, let's see what they say here. So the definite answer for mod support is yes, but um, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to do it at release or they say at the very least, they will make it so that you can have custom mapping at launch. Most likely full mod support is not going to be at release. It's probably going to be like post launch is what they're saying here. And yeah, that pretty much does it for this update. They definitely dropped a bunch of information, some stuff in the beginning that we already kind of knew about or stuff that was kind of really obvious. But towards the end here, they actually released a bunch of information that I don't think I've actually heard before. Then again, these guys drop updates pretty rarely. So, I mean, I don't remember what happens between then and there, but as long as they keep dropping these types of updates and actually showing like a lot of progress then that's pretty cool so yeah that was the update what are your guys' thoughts i mean i know i'm a little late on it but hey what the hell wanted to do it anyway so that's where i'm gonna end the video if you're someone that enjoys the fact that i cover games like 83 then be sure to share the video like the video and comment down below if you're someone that's brand new to the channel subscribe and ding the bell you never know you might find something that you like on the channel if you're someone that would like to support the channel check out my patreon just said two bucks a month that's all i really need and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye